if these chains of uh, uh, irrigation tanks are uh, disturbed or you know urbanized or in some in any way not protected then the the tributaries die and the tributaries get contaminated and then it will contaminate the river itself so just to give a sense of what it means this is now become a norm of bangalore in fact we just counted the number of protests uh, around water in or just generally the protests that have taken place in bangalore and we found that most number of protests in bangalore is about water and this is very common today uh, we are talking post monsoon season when water should be provided and the groundwater tables are high and yet we see uh, you know people coming out it used to be a pattern from slums and lower income neighborhoods now middle class neighborhoods have joined so there's simply no water uh, water levels have fallen quite seriously across bangalore uh, you can't uh, tap groundwater anywhere i mean even if you drill up to 700 feet sometimes you won't get drinking water and if you do get water which is in a you know, good uh, quantity the quality has suffered uh, hardness is very high uh, and meanwhile this is the uh, kaveri waters which uh, are piped in from uh, you know 90 kilometers away give a sense of how the city has grown uh, in terms of population this is 1871 and 20 30 years later it is 1 crore plus this is a 2007 figure for the uh, so called built area of bangalore but uh, in the last 5 years many things have happened to expand the city as well i will skip this slide because it goes into too many details but basically to give us idea that there are many resources water resources let's say why are we focusing on bangalore it is just to indicate the type of uh, demands that there are on the kaveri the same thing can be said about kaveri downstream uh, let's say if you take uh, salem for instance Uh, Salem draws heavily from the Kaveri systems for its industrial needs. And what does it return? Toxic uh, waters, essentially. In fact, most of the industries in Salem are uh, chemical industries, uh, and they are really uh, not treating their system, uh, water and just discharging it. And many of the local struggles that have taken place are around pollution of the Kaveri systems there. And you can go down, and it's the same story. In fact, there is really no water flowing in much of the Kaveri through Tamil Nadu. As a result, people are withdrawing the water from the subterranean flow uh, for bangalore if you uh, from 1971 there are many stages of supplying water for, from the kaveri and the uh, ambition is really to have up to 2000 uh, million liters per day of water supply from the kaveri we are right now drawing about 1000 million liters from the kaveri per day Uh, and that is supplying only half the population of the city the rest of the city has to depend on ground water and those those supplies are also dwindling uh, what we have neglected and therefore essentially lost is the waters from the arkavathi the arkavathi system is essentially the watershed has been destroyed and uh, or destroyed because of heavy industrialization and uh, uh, you know unplanned urbanization uh, and the next major reliance is on ground water we cannot have too much reliance on rain water because we are in a semi arid zone the cost of uh, i'll just go to the next slide which gives you a sense of what it takes if you were to draw water uh, say from tanker supply right which essentially comes from the ground and uh, this is the cost per uh, cost in rupees per kiloliter it's about 40 uh, the next most expensive water is from kaveri and then reclaiming water obviously rain water harvesting shows very high because of the initial capital cost but i have been uh, my house is on uh, you know uh, we harvest rain water and uh, when we built the house we built a storage system into it so we have something like 1.3 lakh liters of storage all around the house uh, so if you build it into the initial capital cost then it is not expensive but if you retrofit it it becomes extremely expensive so this is the retrofitting cost of rain water harvesting and bangalore for ins uh, uh, instance as a special uh requirement uh any house which is built on a plot size of what we call 13 to 40 feet or 14 to 60 feet has to have a rain water system built in for a minimum of 5000 liters uh that's if you're building the house new if you have not if you have already got a house on that you are supposed to have done it from Dece uh, by december last year but that deadline keeps getting extended that's how serious the water problem is uh ground water is relatively cheap and arkavathi is the cheapest source but we have mo more or less lost arkavathi forever uh give a sense of what the challenges are uh, 
I would I would say the same challenges exist, uh, say in 15 or 20 years time for Mysore, or any of the downstream urban areas uh, along the Kaveri. Uh, if you take Kaveri as many stages, and this basically shows the storage capacity as has been built by the different stages of uh, you know supplying water to the city. This is rainwater harvesting as it is increasing and proposed in the into the future. But look at what is happening to groundwater. It is declining. Okay? But if you take the actual water which is supplied, it is always lower than the demand which is here. The huge gap between supply and demand and that has remained consistent for a long time. In fact, what is uh, 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 shocking if you look at the population of the city is we expected the Kaveri fifth stage to come up sometime in 2020 because the population of the city was expected to be 1 crore in 2020 but that population has uh, you know the city has already reached that in 2011 itself uh, now in the if you take the from this the broad picture it seems that kaveri has always been in dispute over the past century uh, between the riparian states and uh, what's important is the basin area is shown in the first row uh, but if you look at what is the tribunal's verdict in 2007, uh, Karnataka gets 37 percent, Tamil Nadu gets 58 percent, and uh, Kerala gets some and a bit to Pondicherry. Now the reason why Kerala is also a riparian state is one of the tributaries, uh, which is known as Kabini, uh, originates in the Vainad area, which is in Kerala. We can keep this for discussion later because you know we really don't want to get into the issues relating to the dispute. It's much talked about, and if you if we go back into our memories, we are not looking at the river. We are always been talking about how much water the river contains, and uh, we have never seen the river for what it is, and we won't don't want to see the river merely for its water. But unfortunately, in uh, uh, in a political sense, the river has never been celebrated. The river has always been fought over. In the past two decades, there have been at least two very major uh, uh, violent reactions to uh, how, which they, uh, are based on how the waters of this river has been apportioned. And uh, you know, it's uh, so deeply politicized that you just cannot talk about this river uh, and how to augment its supply or how to use it or how to rehabilitate it uh, in any forum, either in Karnataka or in Tamil Nadu, by bringing all the parties together. So that's how disputed the river waters are. But in this context, we also need to look at uh, the ambitions of each state. Now, one example I would like to uh, bring to your attention is what happened in uh, uh, 2007. These fertile uh, agrarian regions are between the national parks of N Nagarole and Bandipur, uh, which is really the region where Kaveri uh, originates. This place is known as Chamalapura, and uh, Karnataka proposed to put up a large thermal power station there, coal-fired. So one question we had is, where do you get your water from? I mean, coal-fired power plants require a lot of water. And they said, no problem, we have allocated 3.9 TMC of Kabini water. Uh, so it's one thing to, for a state government to make a statement like that. So when we asked them to prove it, to prove to us that there was that much water available to set aside for a massive thermal power plant. That thermal power plant was initially proposed for 1,000 megawatts, but we knew that it would be escalated to 4,000 megawatts. So it would become a super thermal power plant in time. Apart from the environmental, ecological reasons, wildlife area, uh, fantastic uh, uh, agricultural zone, uh, and so on, our worry was that you set up a thermal power plant, which, which has a massive uh, capital cost, and then you don't have water, what do you do? You have destroyed that area, and then the plant cannot work, right? So let's, uh, you know, we felt we should really, really uh, go deep into the issue. There is a provision in the Indian Electricity Act, and uh, which uh, was discovered by a group from Mysore. In fact, Major General Ombatkere uh, was one of the petitioners. He petitioned the Karnataka Electricity Regulatory Commission and said, under the Electricity Act, the commission has advisory powers to the state. Now, if you have to advise the state, you can formulate your advice by consulting the public. The then chairman of the commission thought it was an exciting idea. So he said, fine, I'll hold a public hearing on this decision. 
So the public hearing was held. And for the first time, I have gone to a lot of public hearings, been beaten up, arrested. All those things have happened to many of us. So it's been largely a very uh, you know, unhealthy experience, to put it mildly. When I went to this public hearing, they were so patient, willing to listen, and the hearings went on for several days. And anybody could come and depose whatever material they had. So we took it very seriously, and we petitioned the Kaveri River Authority. Uh, Mr. Ramsamy Iyer will say authority is the wrong uh, term to use uh, because it is actually a political body. The authority is uh, meant to monitor, but uh, the, uh, as it is now named, the river authority is essentially a council of the chief ministers with the prime minister as the chair. So it's not, in the, not a regulatory body in that sense, but nevertheless, it's called an authority. So we petitioned the authority. I think they have an office in uh, Coimbatore, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they sent our application under RTI to the Minister of Water Resources and they also rejected it. And then uh, we went on appeal. And on appeal we were uh, told to uh, the matter was referred back to the River Authority with the direction that they have to share the information with us. We wanted to know the river flow data for Kabini. Okay, it was a test case. And uh, we finally got that river flow data and what we did was we plotted it and what we find is that the inflow of the river and the outflow from the river. There is always a li you know, certain amount of ecological flow that is maintained to keep because it's going through a very uh, fantastic assemblage of forests and wetlands. So you cannot drain the river completely. This is what is uh, the inflow and the outflow over period. You can see that the river has, uh, you know, over time, 